Well, welcome back to Habits. I'm super excited for this series. We're talking about habits that are forming and shaping our lives. And what a habit is, it's a behavior or a routine done on a regular basis. And it actually can be done subconsciously. Now, um, I hate to break you the news, but we all have habits. And many times we recognize bad habits in others, but we all have bad habits. Uh, bad habits could be uh, smoking, it could be drinking, it could be swearing, it could be um, gossiping, it could be watching too much Netflix, it could be being on your phone too much. Now, I had this habit when I was younger and it was sucking my thumb. I don't know if you can relate with me, but uh, my dentist told my parents that I need to stop sucking my thumb or else I'd have teeth problems. Uh, I couldn't imagine trying to convince a three-year-old to stop sucking their thumb. And what my parents did was they bribed me with a remote control car. They bribed me with a remote control car. And, I, and it worked. And I stopped. And it was really good. And so we all have bad habits. I've had a bad habit. You have bad habits. Um, I, I can think about some good habits. And we actually have a list of the top 10 New Year's resolutions uh, for this year. And uh, these are the top 10. Uh, the first is eat better. The second is exercise more. The third is spend less money. Four is self-care or get more sleep. Five is read more books. Six, learn a new skill. Seven, get a job. <laughs> Eight, make, a, make new friends. Nine, get a new hobby. And 10, focus more on appearance. Now, I'm probably the last person that should be speaking on habits because they are very, very difficult for me to form. And you're probably able to relate with me. If you've made a New Year's resolution, the chances of you completing it this year, I'm sorry to break you the news, is 8%. 8%. And uh, maybe like New Year's resolutions are so silly. I don't make them because of the 8%. Well, if you're saying that, guess what? If you do try to put a new habit into your life, the chances of you getting it or completing it is actually 11%. 11%. So the chances aren't high. We're not good at putting new habits in our life. For example, I was back on my game, and I mean the dating game. I've scored myself a beautiful woman. Her name was Megan Venema, and I was soon to make her Megan Hopkins. So I did uh, what any reasonable man should do. I started working out because I want to turn this one pack into a six pack, and that's a hard upgrade, let me tell you. And I started working on my biceps, and I didn't know that like on arms day, the next day I actually couldn't lift my arms, or on the legs day, I couldn't walk up the stairs in my dorm afterwards. And some people say work smarter, not harder. And I'm just letting you know when it comes to working out, there is nothing easy about working out. It's just hard work, and I dropped the ball. I failed miserably. I didn't complete my habit. It's part of that 11%. And so you can probably relate with me on that. And I think the important question to ask is why are habits so hard to implement into our lives? And I've learned that habits are really hard to break and habits are really hard to make. And people have done a ton, a ton of research on this. And humans actually have a very interesting quirk about themselves. And it's this, we'd rather continue doing something that we've always done because it's easy and simple than actually doing something new because it's difficult and unnatural. And change always requires risk. Change always requires risk. And I would tend to agree with this. I'd rather do something more comfortable over and over and over again than actually try to put something new into my life that's hard work and un unnatural. Oftentimes we think that we can just like start a new habit and just like it just happens. Well, Mark Twain says it like this. Habit is habit and not to be flung out the window, but coax downstairs a step at a time. And so if you've made that New Year's resolution for this year, um, if you're currently in it, the first two weeks is like the honeymoon stage. It's super, super easy. Once you get into month one, it starts backsliding. And then once you are got back to the final year, like this time next year, you're actually where you were or further behind. And so today, we want to look at maintaining our habits together. We want to look at maintaining our habits. And uh, this is so, so, imp so important because we form habits. 
It's our job to form habits. It's no one else's responsibility. We form habits. And here's the important thing to know. We form habits, and then habits form us. And our question for this series, are our habits making us more or less like Jesus? And so habits of Jesus, when we say that, um, I kind of want to dive into uh, a couple habits of Jesus. And there's no specific list in the Bible of habits of Jesus. It doesn't list it specifically. But as we look over the overarching narrative of Jesus, we can grab and understand a few habits that he had. And uh, here's, here's a few of them. Uh, prayer. And I don't know, Jesus was great at praying. It was one of his habits. And I don't know if this year you've been going to church for a little while and you're like, hey, that's actually one of my New Year's resolutions. I want to be praying more. That would be great. Jesus was great at praying. Another one of his habits was reading scripture and knowing scripture. And maybe that's one of your habits that you want to grab for this year. Another one was worship. He was excellent at focusing on and responding to who God is. Uh, He was great at celebrating. That was a great habit he had. He was great at celebrating with friends and bringing people together. And maybe that's something that you want to do this year is celebrate success. Another one, habit that he has was he was great at making friends. Jesus had so, so many types of friends. And maybe that's part of your goal this year. And another one that Jesus was good at was exercise. Jesus was good at exercising. He walked everywhere, right? And so those are some of Jesus' habits. And as we're going to be talking through this today, um, it's important for us to know that there are a lot of wrong things with us. There's a lot of right things with us. And what I want to do is, during our life groups this week, I want us to make a list. Make all a list of the bad habits. Make all a list of the good habits. And just choose one. Choose one. And I'm going to be talking through three simple steps that I want us to take. And so just choose one. It'll be a whole, whole lot easier. And so the first thing that I want you to remember is have a plan. Have a plan. I cannot stress enough how important a plan is. I also like to refer to it as a strategy. Have a strategy. And the more detailed your plan or strategy is, the better off you will be. And Anyone that's decided to follow Jesus needs to have a plan. Anyone that's decided to follow Jesus needs to have a plan because habits are shaping us more or less like Jesus. I need a plan. You need a plan. Not having a plan or strategy is something that the enemy will use. And here's the thing. God has a plan. John 10.10 says this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. God has a plan. God has a strategy. He sent his Son down to this earth. He was fully God, fully man. And he lived with us. He suffered for us. And now lives in us so that our lives can point to him through the habits that we have. When Jesus came to this earth, he didn't have this wishy-washy plan. Was I going to come out and hang out on earth and kind of hopefully save the world? And no, it was, it was this deliberate plan that he had set out and that was he was going to see. And so he had a plan. And uh, something that I've learned in my own life is don't wait I can't wait to feel like doing something. Living life by feeling didn't, doesn't get me places. I need to specifically choose, and so I need to have a plan. And the more I've sat around in my life, the more I sit around in my life, if you know what I'm saying. And it's when I get up and I start moving that I actually get energy and I start completing my plan and my strategy, that thing, that habit that I want to put into my life. And so that's the first thing, is we need to, have a plan. The second is this. Do not go in alone. Do not go into it alone. I think we showed up to high school because our parents would get a phone call if we weren't there. We have sports teams, coaches, teammates, practices, games. We have a music teacher. We play in a band. We practice. Now, I'm not, one, uh, I'm not one to run, but if I was to run, I would need to go out to Soul Runners. 
because I need someone else to do this life with me, to make sure I'm running. And maybe you're thinking of the word accountable right now, that we need accountability. And the, the word accountability, in my background and my knowledge, and maybe you can feel the same way, is accountability, it feels like I'm, someone's holding me accountable. So someone's up here and I'm down here and someone's holding me accountable. And when I say don't go into it alone, I feel like it's more like this. It's like a team approach where we're going into this thing together, that we're going in as a team, that we're going in as an army, that we're in this thing together. And I love what Ecclesiastes 4 says. It says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And this verse is all about friendship. And at Southgate, uh, what we believe is everyone needs to be in a life group. It is something that is essential. It is something that is vital to our lives. That in this journey of life, the ups and downs, the highs and lows, the successes, the failures, that we'd be able to do this life together with a team. And that team's life group. And we have, as a leadership team and all of our life group leaders, we have the same desire is to do this life together. And there's a lot better chance of succeeding. Did you know... So let's go back to the beginning where I talked about an 8% success rate, or let's say it goes up to 11% success rate. If you don't go into this thing alone, or if you have someone to go into this with, whether it's a group of people or an individual, it increases your percent from 8 or 11, whatever you want to say, to 65% just by not going alone. 65%. Now some studies has even given this up to 95% success rate if you don't go in alone, which is incredible. So the two things that we need to have, right, is we need to have a plan, we need to get going, right? And then two is we need to not go into it alone. Have a plan, don't go into it alone. And the third is this. This is important. And I believe that this is the missing 5%, if we're saying 95%, or 35% 35% if we're saying 65. This is the final key ingredient. And it's this. Receive grace. Receive grace. The verse that comes to mind for me when I, when I think of receiving grace and we're talking about habits is, is Philippians 4.13. And it says this. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And this is a very, very powerful verse. I like to read it a little bit slower and, and uh, let it kind of sink in. And so the first phrase in it is, I can. This is an excellent start to receiving grace. I can. I, I, I do not think, when it comes to habits, I don't think that Jesus would use this phrase, I can't. When it comes to habits, I don't think a follower of Jesus should be using the phrase, I can't. And I can't didn't get anyone in life. I think that the phrase, I can is a great, great start. So it says, for I can do everything. I can do everything. It doesn't say, for I can do most things, that I can do a lot of things, that I can do incredible things. It says, for I can do everything. For I can do everything, and there's no buts. I can do everything but breaking my swearing habit. I can do everything but breaking my texting habit or binge watching on TV. It says that I can do everything. There's no room for excuses. I can do everything. And I often think of it as like a super, a superhero like Thor or Spider-Man that I can do everything, right? And I think when it comes down to our everyday lives, when it comes down to our habits, is the simplicity of that I can do everything, my daily routine, is so, so important. And I can do everything, and it's through Christ. I can do everything, and it's through Christ. Through Christ. It's not on my own strength. It's on Christ's strength. So I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Who gives me strength when I'm on my last straw for patience. Who gives me strength when I'm feeling my addiction. Who gives me strength when I've lost all motivation. 
I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And this is an important biblical truth. Good has more power over evil. Light swallows up darkness. Life overcomes death. And anything that God has for us is always stronger. And so, so the three points we're going to need to remember is the first is have a plan. If we don't have a plan, we're not going to get anywhere. And it's easy to procrastinate and it's easy not to start. And so if we have a plan, get going. That's the first thing that we need to be doing. The second one is don't go into it alone. Don't go into it alone. Our odds and our percentages increase huge if we go in with someone else or if we go in as a team. And the third thing is receive grace. Receive grace. In my own life, um, if I'm just honest, um, I'll just say it straightforward. Is reading the Bible for me is not something natural. It's, it's not something that comes to me. I don't like reading. I'm not, a, I'm not a guy that sits in a library. You wouldn't find me there. Um, I like being on the go. Reading is very, very difficult for me. And it's a habit that I think is very necessary in my life and to maintain that habit. And so these three practices or these three points that I've been talking about this morning um, are something that I have to put in my own life. Um, I have a, a, a team of four guys that I do life with and uh, we talk about this stuff. And most recently we've, we've downloaded this Bible app and uh, really simply, it has a plan. It has its own plan for us and we all follow it. I have four other guys that are helping keeping me accountable. And I have God's grace and his help to help me through those last five or 35%, whatever you have to say. And I really believe that it it, is going to be the only thing that helps me. If I was on my own trying to read the Bible, if I didn't have a plan, I wouldn't be getting anything done. What I love is in Titus 2, um, it reads this. Titus 2, 11 to 12. And I think this applies so, so well into this morning. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness or no to bad habits. We could insert that. And worldly passions. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. And I think that's so, so applicable. And so... The honest truth is I'm going to mess up. Um, There's going to be a day where um, I didn't get to read my Bible. Something came up. I slept in. I stayed up too long the night before. Something happened. And the easiest thing to happen to me is for me to get down on myself. But if I always do that, then it's just another habit I'm going to have to break, right? And so when I mess up, I, I guess we could compare it to a shirt. Um, I'm a messy eater, so uh, I get a stain on my shirt. What I'm not going to do is throw out my shirt. No one throws out a shirt after they get a stain on it. What they do is they have a plan. They put some washing stuff on it, right? They don't go into it alone. You get your friendly washing machine, you toss her in, right? And you're going to start over the next day. You're going to receive that grace, and we're going to start right over again. And honestly, maintaining clothes, maintaining habits, it's something that we're going to need to do. And in this life, I I don't know what brought you here on Sunday morning. Like, I don't know what brought you here today or why you're watching. And here's the thing. If if you've been looking for something and you, you feel this emptiness, I honestly believe it's the person, Jesus. He's who I've been talking about all this morning, the one that supplies strength that we're able to do all things through. And my huge encouragement is if you haven't united your life with him, if you haven't handed over your life and said, God, I want to do things your way and your strength and your might, that that's so, so important. And that's the first step that we need to be taking. And so that's my encouragement for you this morning. Remember, our three points are we need to make a plan, not go into it alone, and finally receive God's grace.